morning guys so uh, I've got up nice and early and uh, I'm gonna go and uh, fish along the uh, promenade this morning uh, where I went yesterday and uh, hooked into a barracuda and then uh, did a little bit of float fishing behind the castle so I've actually brought my uh, tripods and my uh, GoPro chest mount today so I'm gonna go and give that a go with um, some of the uh, excess uh, float fishing bait that I've got um, from yesterday's session as soon as I get down there see if I can get an early an early fish on the lures like uh, what was going on yesterday and then move over uh, and do a couple of hours on the float for a bit of fun and uh, get a bit of uh, footage for you guys so yeah I'll get the camera back on when I'm down there I'm just waiting for a taxi at the moment because there's no way I'm walking today I'm absolutely knackered here we are out on the uh, promenade down Paphos I'll just give you a quick look see so you've got the uh, harbour up there and the castle that's where I was yesterday so that's where I'll be moving to after this but um, just in here this little bay this is where I was walking yesterday on the way there and there was uh, that fish just busting up in the middle here it wasn't too far out it was literally there and uh, yeah it was absolute carnage so uh, I thought I'd come here this morning just to have a look just before I go to the castle float fishing to see if anything turns up but yeah, you, it's, a, it's a weird one because you notice all the uh, fish start bubbling first and then it's absolute carnage. You, it just looks like it's raining in one area when it's this flat calm and then all of a sudden you see all the bait jump and then uh, the fish comes up as well. But in this area down here, um, that's like a swimming area. So according to some of the uh, locals, like if you get caught fishing there, then the police will have your pants down pretty much and uh, they'll take all your gear. So. Yeah, it's best to stay like this side but if you get a taxi um, to this area um, I just say drop me off at the uh, at the castle from my hotel which is right down that way um, and uh, yeah they drop me off in this area on the way when you see the castle just get out and just fish to to the left of the uh, harbour slightly in this little bay and uh, you should be right to be fair out of everywhere I've been around this area this is probably the most fishiest bit and uh, the other side of the uh, back wall of the uh, harbour there where the castle is so you've got like a rocky outcrop and that which I'll show you after when I go round but there's some pretty big mullet in there and uh, some sea turtles as well so when I was there um, yesterday uh, yeah there was big sea turtles and uh, big fish in here and uh, smaller fish over the back um, so hopefully get a, get a fish in this session uh, on the camera for you um, whether that's uh, one of the barracuda that was in here yesterday or uh, some of them little uh, rainbow wrasse um, out on the uh, rocky outcrop. So I'll just give you a quick run through the setup I'm going to be using and uh, yeah, take it from there. So here's the setup I've got guys. It's a uh, Shimano STC telescopic rod. It's uh, 240, um, so about eight foot and uh, it's rated seven to 30 gram. Um, I've got it fitted with a uh, pen spin Fisher 2.5 on there. Um, it's loaded with uh, some really light braid actually, I think it's like 16 pound braid um, and that goes down to I believe it's a uh, 20 pound uh, fluorocarbon leader. But yeah that's what I'm going to give a go this morning really quick um, and then when I start float fishing I'll just take this reel off and put on my uh, Shimano Nexave which has got some 8 pound mono on so yeah that's what I'm going to be doing this morning flicking out a Pachinko uh, 100 or the uh, Astori on here and uh, hopefully find that Barracuda. These are some of the lures that I brought with me. I'll just quickly show you. I've got the uh, Sidewinder Switchblade, 30 gram there. Uh, some smaller um, tied minnows there. An ocean bait and pearl. Um, and these ones, I haven't actually used these yet, and I've never actually used these before, but I want to get into them as uh, press baits. It's literally a uh, hard law, sinking hard law, that you just have to impart the whole action. Um, as far as I know, the uh, the press baits do not have any action to them apart from a slight wobble maybe so if you want to add any twitches and that it's all done uh, via you rather than the law doing anything but I thought because they're quite quite small and quite heavy as well these are 28 gram but they feel a bit heavier uh, they should be ideal for this sort of stuff but it's a bit shallow here today so I probably won't use them um, I'm more than likely going to be uh, looking out my uh, surface law So this is what I was using, this was a brand new surface lure yesterday and uh, <laughs> you can see it's already a bit dented but the hooks seem alright to use again so I'm going to chuck this out. Um, I've also got the, uh, the story there as well, the smaller story so all the bait fish seems to be tiny out here so I'm going to try that and uh, see how we get on. The uh, Pachinko 
100 to start off with. There we go guys, out there. So if you can see near that orange boy, Barracuda's there, right. <laughs> Let's go, let's go, come on. I don't know if I got that on camera, but yeah, Barracuda's in here. Uh, it didn't look as big as the uh, one yesterday, but um, yeah, there's a small little bust up there. I'm not too sure if I put a metal on just to get a bit more distance or one of them press baits, but I'll try with this top water for a bit longer because that's what I hooked up on it uh, yesterday. So I'll keep going. Um, if it does heat up a little bit, I'll get the chest, uh, the chest mat out and uh, give that a go. But I've only seen them explode out the water once. So. I'm just going to keep going and hopefully get him. Well guys, it doesn't look like there's an awful lot happening this morning uh, compared to yesterday. So uh, I'm not going to waste too much time because I'm a little bit limited today. I've uh, got some jet skiing to do a little bit later on. So I'm going to head to the castle now. Um, maybe ping out a couple of metals and then uh, switch over to float tactics and uh, <coughs> use some of the uh, maggots and the uh, and the worm that I got yesterday um, and try and catch some mini species and maybe anything else that shows up so I'll head over there now uh, give you a quick uh, quick look at some of the stuff that's on the way there as well Love to see me down there. really shallow here so that's why I'm gonna go over the uh, back bit some big mullet in here as well really big mullet in this marina like huge mullet I only seen like three or four yesterday but they're all well over five pound <laughs> hello loads of cats as well loads of stray cats everywhere <coughs> But yeah, when you uh, go fishing, these are the sort of areas the locals fish. You can see this. Someone snagged their float there on the rocks. Probably fishing for mullet or something like that. But the water gets a little bit deeper here because it's coming up to the boats now. And uh, yeah, this is where some of the fish are probably sat. Under these pontoons near the restaurants and that. But I'm not going to fish here. You're allowed to fish here, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to go over the back bit and uh, try there. So this is kind of like the uh, strip where you uh, head towards the castle. It's sort of like the uh, the harbour area. If you say to a taxi driver you want to go to the Paphos Harbour, um, if you're over here and you want to go fishing or restaurants and stuff like that, then this is the uh, spot you want to go to. Got a load of restaurants here. 
um, a load of restaurants, you've got loads of boat tours and stuff like that, fishing tours um, and all the booking, booking uh, kiosks there, all the places, <laughs> cat getting ready to uh, get some breakfast, yeah so got all the uh, kiosks there for all the water sport activities and stuff like that and you've got restaurants, and, yeah stuff like that. <laughs> Morning. Yeah, loads of bars, shops. It's restaurants like the ideal fishing spot. <coughs> Some guys fishing there. Yeah, there was some mullet in here yesterday, uh, some sea turtles in here yesterday, but apparently you get massive squid and cuttlefish, uh, all different types. today. But yeah, once you've uh, gone past all the shops and that, this is what you've got. I was fishing in here yesterday, it's really shallow. Um, I don't think there's much tidal movement, but probably about three foot of water, two foot of water, but there's some big mullet swimming through here, so I gave it a go, but nothing happened. And uh, here's the uh, tourist attraction. Uh, on the end of the harbour, the, the castle. So this is where it seems like everyone goes out. And uh, as you can see, the fishing around here, it's not prohibited, so. Yeah, you can imagine quite a lot of people do it. That guy there looks like he's trying to poach something there in that corner. And uh, yeah, you've got the castle here and the rocks and all that on the outside, so yeah. Oh. Get up here. It's probably full of people fishing this one. What's this? Morning, darling. <laughs> Let's go. So, this is the uh, view from the castle side. That's where I was out there before passing boats. Um, now we're on this rocky outcrop this is where I'm going to be float fishing but you can see here it's really shallow here so probably ideal for the surface law actually along here maybe I should have come here first thing in the morning reminds me a little bit of home some of the bouldery outcrops like this except these are a lot easier to walk on nice and smooth rocks and uh, They've got a bit more grip than our ones. Probably because they're not wet. <coughs> I think they'd still be right when they're wet, these. Oh, there's loads of guys over there in my, in this my spot, they're sheeping me. <laughs> I might go over and see how it's going. Show them how it's done. Just shows the early bird catches the worm. Got to be nice and early down here. Don't know what they're fishing for, I presume they're float fishing. Maybe bottom fishing even. Well, I'm gonna have a couple of casts here and uh, see if I can get anything on the float with the uh, worms and the maggots. Hi right, guys, so uh, just before I do a quick GoPro battery change, um, just show you I'm all set up. I've got my uh, float stop there, going down to a waggler that's uh, just run uh, through the swivel on the uh, bottom of the waggler uh, it's a uh, six plus two so that means the waggler's weighted six gram and I can add two grams so I've added two gram and uh, 
usually I fish a short trace for the um, like a short hook length for the mullet but um, from chatting to uh, one of the locals yesterday he was telling me to have a long snood because um, everything's done on site fishing here uh, fish wise so they'll be seeing any little bits that you've got terminal tackle wise on the rig so he said to minimalize that um, and catch more then uh, just increase your hook length so I've gone for about a foot maybe a foot and a half um, of hook length there uh, I'm using eight pound uh, mainline mono um, just on my uh, travel rod so no setup change just uh, change the reel over and put a waggler on um, so I'm gonna be using uh, maggots and uh, worms so I'll give you a quick look at them now and then uh, We'll chuck this out um, probably around about five six foot so guys yesterday when i went to the uh, fishing shop after the uh, barracuda escapade um this is uh what they gave me for the float fishing they said the maggots uh, you'll catch all your sort of mini species on that and uh, some slightly bigger stuff perhaps on the uh, worm baits and the worm will you believe it it's a uh, it's red cat I i'm not sure what they call it here um yeah <laughs> but yeah so uh, some nice red cat there these have been in the fridge and uh, yeah they're still still going well nicely so uh, yeah some good baits for this morning uh, if the worm ain't working then I've got a uh, pot full of maggots there and it costs five five euros per thing um, and for an afternoon fishing I'd probably say you could get away with using a pot of that over two sessions but I, I just went overhaul on it just gave me 20 euros got two of each and uh yeah i've just brought one out with me today i might go this evening maybe for the last last little fishing session and uh take some worm with me but yeah that's what i bought on this session is uh if you're just out um looking to wet a line then you probably get away with one tub of worm and uh, one tub of maggots so that's my worm baited up guys nice wriggly uh red cat <clears throat> rag worm so I'm just going to go on this rock here, see how clear it is, but I think that drops off a little bit further out, so I'm going to try and ping this as best I can. That should be alright. Whoa, look at that. Don't know what that was. Going for the bait fish. Definitely wasn't as uh, wasn't as big as yesterday. <laughs> well, there's loads of them. Not sure what that is. Hopefully, you can see the float just out there. Oh, there's a bite. You've got something, I think. Got a little something. What's this? Hey, hey. Now that, <coughs> I believe, is a uh, wrasse. The ones we were catching yesterday were these ones and uh, another one called a rainbow wrasse, which is... Uh, probably about the same size they grow is about this big um, <coughs> we were getting a few bigger ones yesterday uh, maybe the length of the palm of the hand um, this one's just over the width of the palm of my hand on the worm bait really nice pretty fish there we go plenty of these around See how that goes. There we go, guys. A rainbow wrasse. So, guys, done a little bit of uh, float fishing down here on the rocks. Um, had a couple of um, them little wrasse things uh, on the worm. Um, didn't bother trying the maggots just yet, but I'm going to go for a little wander um, a little bit further down the uh, the rocks there. Um, past those guys that are fishing there um, 
on the other side, um, get into the uh, harbour mouth on the end of these uh, this bouldery outcrop, and uh, yeah, just do a little bit more of the float and see if I can find anything. There was something that swam past before, uh, not too sure what it was. It, it looked big, but I don't know if it was a fish or a shoal of fish or uh, a sea turtle, because we seen one of them yesterday um, swimming into the harbour mouth. There's some pretty big sea turtles around there. Um, but this thing was about two foot under the water and uh, it looked really wide, but I'm not sure if it was a big shoal of fish, um, perhaps like some bream or something, but I can imagine they'd be a little bit deeper down here. But yeah, it was a bit strange. Not sure what it was. Found a nice flat rock here, guys. So I'm going to try here, I think. Fishing boat just going out by the looks of it. Got the uh, sun in my face here where I'm filming, so might not be the best uh, footage, but yeah, gonna have a couple of casts here and uh, see what happens. The old man found me on the rocks. He's getting his fishing fix. <laughs> He's got one. He's got one. What the hell is that? That is one of the other rats. That we were getting. Hey, hey! Well, guys, that's me back at the hotel now. Um, if you are coming on holiday to Paphos, uh, yeah, definitely check out the uh, castle area behind there, that bouldery arm, and uh, in and around the uh, shops there on that um, little bit of the promenade. That's worth a shot uh, with some surface laws. Um, Hopefully you catch the Barracuda, unlike me. <laughs> a little bit unlucky this time, but perhaps next time. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, if you enjoyed the video, then hit the like button and uh, subscribe to the channel. Until the next video, until the uh, next holiday, <laughs> tight lines and uh, catch you in the next video.